Howdy people on YouTube. Today I thought I'd do a review on my Rambo knife collection. I've been admiring a lot of the videos on YouTube, but they all tend to be from anywhere from a year to 10 years old. I gather since the last Rambo film came out in 2008. That's pretty much the timeline where all these videos were made. So um, I have bought myself the latest uh, collection. It's called the Signature Edition, Sylvester, St Sylvester Stallone Signature Edition. Uh, up until, or well, as of April 2018, this is the most authentic um, knife replica collection out there on the market. There's nothing better than this. This uh, collection is called the Masterpiece Collection. Now, there are other boxes out there, Sylvester Stallone Signature Edition boxes, but they are not the Masterpiece Collection. So if you notice, on all these boxes here, which look very similar to the other boxes, the Sylvester Stallone Signature is down in the bottom right-hand corner on every single box down the bottom and down the bottom if you look at the uh, the same type boxes that is also brought out by Master Cutlery and uh, the Hollywood Collectibles Group uh, the signature is up in the top right hand corner and these vary in different makes of the knives which I'm going to show you in a second because we're going to go through exactly how they're packed and what's the difference between the last lot of uh, limited edition 10,000 signature knives to uh, the, uh, this edition. So let's start off with the machete, the Rambo 4 machete. And I will show you exactly what the box looks like and how it's packed. So the side of the box looks like that top of the box looks like that if you go to this side it just says Rambo Sylvester Stallone signature edition this side says Rambo and this side here says the Hollywood collectible group and it gives you the limited edition number, which is 275 from 10,000. And how that was packed, oh, let's see if there's anything underneath. Oh, yeah, that's the, the base of the box, and it's giving you the other three knives in the collection. The knife from the first Blood movie, which is the survival buoy knife. You've got the mission knife out of the Rambo First Blood Part 2. Uh, yeah, survival buoy knife, and then you've got what I classify, and I, I've never heard anyone else call uh, this knife this way, but I classify this knife as the Rambo 3 Baker Team Tribute Knife, and we'll go into detail about why I call it that a little bit later. So, this is how it's packed. So, you have your sheath which I still have mine in the wrapper. I'm not taking anything out of these signature editions. So that goes in like that. You then have your cardboard that fits on top like that. You then have the knife, which is in a nice little rubberized foam case so it doesn't move. And once again, it sells Sylvester Stallone, 275 of 10,000. You've got a little thing here to protect the blade like that. That sits on top. Like that. And the cover goes on top. So that's what it looks like when you purchase it from an eBayer or a store or anywhere where you're lucky enough to pick one of these up because they're very hard to find. 
So that is the Rambo 4 Machete. Now we're going to look at what I classify as the Rambo 3 Baker Team Tribute Knife. And the front of the knife looks like this. Or the box, sorry. Side of the box looks like that. One side, you've got the Hollywood Collectibles Group, and this is 1680 from 10,000. And on the other side, you've got the big Rambo insignia, and on this side, similar to the front, Rambo 3. On the base of the box, you've got Very similar to the machete. And that's pretty much about it. And it's not promoting the other knives, so it's just that. And then in the box, you'll find a little uh, paracord that you will tie to the base of the knife. That goes there. The sheath, which has a Sylvester Stallone signature right there, and it says Rambo 3 down the bottom. Mint in plastic. That goes like that. Little cover goes on the sheath, such as that. And then this knife, honestly, is an absolute monster. I don't think this knife is the same size as the other ones that have come before it, but it is absolutely huge. And if you notice, it says Rambo 3 up the top, Sylvester Stallone's signature just underneath it, and on this side, just the limited number, which is 1680 from 10,000. Gorgeous looking knife. And we'll go into why I call it the Baker Team Tribute Knife. You're going to want to hear this because I have not seen a video, well, I've not found a video, actually explaining um, what the notches are at the top of this knife. I never knew what they were. So I did some investigating and I found out some pretty interesting information. So... That's the Rambo 3 and the Rambo 4. And now on to the First Blood Part 2 Rambo knife. This is the Mission knife. They call this the Mission Bowie knife. That's the front of the box. The side of the box. And this one's limited, a num limited edition number to 1864 from 10,000. Once again, you got the big Rambo name on that side. Now this is the most important thing underneath this box. This is what you receive on this master piece collection that you didn't receive on previous signature edition knives. You had the John Rambo signature edition, I think, that was limited to 5,000. And you also had ones that looked very similar to this in this gold and black box. But they did not come with the diamond sharpener on the sheath. And that's authentic to the actual movie. So this is the first time that this sharpener has been included on the knife. So if you are looking to buy the Masterpiece collection, the first thing you look for is that gold diamond sharpener and we'll look into that when I show you some of these knives that are out of the box next to me here. So once again there it is here actually there's the sheath and there's the diamond sharpener on the sheath and that goes in like that cardboard box on top of it and then you have the gorgeous 
mission knife. So you got the Sylvester Stallone Signature Edition, 1864, Rambo 2, Rambo First Blood Part 2, in plastic bag. I'm not going to take that out. Put the little cover on there. It sits in there like that if you want to display it. This came on top of it when I bought mine. And this just goes on top of this. Excuse the camera work because I'm only holding a mobile phone here. So, so there we got two, three and four. And my favourite of all is the one that got the juices flowing back in 1982. The original. Sylvester Stallone's Signature Edition Replica First Blood Knife. And once again, prior to this masterpiece collection, this knife did not have a whetstone pocket on the sheath. And also, very importantly, if you look at the blade teeth, the saw teeth at the top there, every knife that came before this masterpiece collection knife only had 12 teeth, 12 saw teeth, which was not authentic to the movie. The movie actually had 14 teeth. So if you're looking to buy an authentic masterpiece collection knife, make sure you count the teeth and make sure it has a whetstone in a little pouch, as I'm going to show you right now. So here's the base of the box. There's the little pouch for the whetstone. That's what you need to look for. If you look at all the sheaths that come before this, they didn't have that pouch. So this is as authentic as you can get as of April 2018. And this is what the sheath looks like. So in that little pocket there, you have a little whetstone. I don't know what grit it is. Could be a thousand. I don't think it's any more than a thousand, but it does seem pretty rough. So that goes in there like that. Box on the top. Like that. Here's the gorgeous survival buoy knife, the one that kick started it all. Replica that is. That will go in there like that. Little foam piece sits on there to protect the blade. That goes on there like that. And that sits on like that. So there is the four signature edition masterpiece collection Rambo knives. So very hard to track down each and every one. It's not like one seller sells you all these knives i've had to find good prices make sure they come in good boxes make sure the knives are authentic so as you know whenever you look on ebay there are so many knockoffs on there you got to be really careful now we're going to look to so these are the signature edition these are the standard edition exactly like those but standard so this is what the standard box looks like and these are all from master cutlery once again, if you look at the saw blade there, it's got the 14 teeth. Hollywood Collectibles Group. And it's got the Rambo name in red. If we have a look underneath the box, pretty much the same pictures as the signature edition box, showing that it's got the whetstone pouch. Nothing on the side, just a bit of um just like a picture of a tree i think it is so that goes in there like that once again this thing would have gone on top of the sheath and on top of that went the foam where the knife sat on now these knives i bought over here to actually use so i take these camping with me depending on my mood depending on which one I want to take. And this is what the knife looks like. 
So you've got the whetstone there, it says Rambo First Blood, you've got the leg tie, doesn't come with a hand strap, a leather hand strap, but I have bought some off eBay. A little whetstone, I'll show you what that looks like. So it's just a little whetstone that sits in the top, authentic to the actual movie. And as I said before, no knife before this actually had this little pouch on. But the most important thing, if I can pull this out, is the 14 teeth on this knife. Every knife that came before this only had 12 teeth. So that's what it looks like. And it does come with a survival kit. If you can undo this, and a compass. So it's a working compass at the moment here. I'm facing east. I don't know if you can pick that up. But it's pointing to east. So it's a working compass. And you've got your little matches, surgical blade, sterile surgical blade. And I think there's some fishing line or something in there. And that's also something that didn't come with the last lot of knives. That's They call that a kit silencer, so it doesn't rattle around. Not that it really works, I can still hear it if you shake the knife, but um, but that's included in it as well. So, that is the first blood knife. Absolutely gorgeous. It's not easy trying to film by yourself. Okay, so we'll leave that there. Next we have the Rambo First Blood Part 2 knife. So that's what that looks like. Side. And this one's in red, so the standard edition first blood knife was in blue. This one's in red. And once again, the sheath would have gone underneath there. You then would have had that on the top. Got the little rubberized foam setting there where the knife would have sat in there. And this came on top of the knife, so not to probably damage the box. So that's how you would buy it, and that's how it would come to you. And on the bottom, which is the most important thing, shows the diamond sharpener, which has never come with any other knife prior to it. So we'll leave that over here. And this is what this knife looks like. And this knife is an absolute beast. It is so huge. If you were to take this camping and someone was to walk past your campsite and you had this carving something, I'm pretty sure that shit their pants. Let's see if I can pull this out. That's what that one looks like. It's dark in colour. There's a black thing through the middle of it there, so it's hard to pick up on the camera. And once again, no wrist strap came with that on top there, but if you open it up, it's got a compass and the kit silencer, exactly like in the first knife, the first blood knife. So that is Rambo. First Blood Part 2 knife. Now, instead of buying the Master Cutlery Rambo 3 and Rambo 4 Machete, 
I decided to go with the Hibbon knives. And the reason being is Gil Hibbon is against Master Cutlery making his knives. He doesn't want them making his knives. He has no say in the matter, but he's said that he doesn't like Master Cutlery making the design of his knife. In saying that also, they do not pay him any royalties at all. So you think Master Cutlery would pay him something for actually making the knife that he designed. So I thought instead of buying the standard edition from Master Cutlery, which is not even the right knife because it doesn't have the Gil Hibben signature on it, I would buy the Hibben 3 and the Hibben 4. So the Hibben 3 box is exactly the same as the box that was released by Carol Co. United Cutlery in the 1980s. So I gather that that uh, design there is either a trademark of United Cutlery or Gil Hibben because Master Cutlery cannot use that uh, picture of that knife. I haven't seen any Master Cutlery boxes like that. That's what it looks like there. It says their knife design Gil Hibben. And this is what the box looks like. So it comes with a little cardboard thing the knife sat in. And all of Gil Hibben's knives come with a little pamphlet promoting his other knives. And if you have a look on the back here, that's the legend, Gil Hibben, the designer of the uh, Rambo 3 and Rambo 4 machete. So they all go down in there like that. And if you thought the uh, Rambo 2 knife was big, this thing is even bigger. Absolute beast. So you've got the little Hibben knives on there. On the stud it actually says Hibben. And then if we open that and look at that, that is one bad ass knife. And I refer to this knife as the Rambo 3 Baker Team Tribute Knife. And we'll go into that in a second once I review the Hibben 4. But if you notice there, right there, that's where the Hibben name is, designed by Hibben Knives, Gil Hibben. Now, you don't have that on the Master Cutlery one. And here where it does say Rambo 3 on the Master Cutlery one, because uh, United Cutlery can't use the Rambo name because it's trademarked to Master Cutlery, Hibben, uh, Gil's just put his name there. So it says Hibben 3. I also go into why they can't use the Rambo name as they originally had the license. United Cutlery originally had the license to make all these knives and I'll go into why they no longer can use the um, the name now let me just try to get this in okay that's that now we'll have a look at that in a second so this is the last one which is the Hibben 4 once again, I thought I'd go with this instead of the Master Cutlery Edition. That's what it looks like there. Even four. Now, from what I've read, this is 1090 carbon steel. So this is not a machete to be messed with. And it will require a bit of maintenance. So if you get this blade wet, it will rust. So what you need to do is dry it. And it needs to be oiled every now and again to keep it in tip-top shape. Definitely don't put it in the sheath wet. Because that'll just be a hive of it rusting. So that's what that looks like. You get a, a certificate of authenticity. Hibben 4. Hibben Knives Custom Knife Series. And it just tells you how to look after your knife. Once again, 
and you get like a little pamphlet. So they're packed really well. United Cutlery really do pack their knives well. Great looking box. Love the colour. And this is the knife or the machete if I can. Okay, let's put it down there. Now this is one heavy beast. So I wouldn't recommend going for long bushwalks with this. This is perfect for around campfire or if you owned a farm. Chopping down some dead trees. Chopping the head off chooks. That's one heavy knife. So it comes with its own lanyard. And it's got the little logo up the top there, Hibben 4. And the sheath's a really well made sheath. I think on the back here it does say Hibben 4. There. So it's a really awesome looking knife. Alright, now we're going to go into why I call this the ba Rambo 3 Baker Team Tribute Knife. I've always wondered what these little scallops or little notches in the knife are up the top here. You've got one, two, three, four. You've got another four on the other side. And you've got a big one at the front. And that same one there. First of all, let's go into this slot. This slot originally was designed for another retractable blade. So they made this blade where it would slide in there and it would come out on either side, on this side and on that side, like a butterfly effect, and it was had a blade and another blade. Apparently they were going to incorporate it into the movie, but it never made it. So there's two in existence, apparently, two prototypes. Uh, Gil Hibben owns one and Sylvester Stallone owns the other. So if you actually Google um, the Rambo 3 knife, you can actually see pictures of it. It looks beastly. But how that they, they would use it in the movie, I have no idea. So I, I have, it's not surprising that they scrapped it. But these notches are the, the thing that really got me. I found out after investigating, and it took me a long time to work out what they are. This is the Baker team. This is the special forces unit that Rambo served with in Vietnam that didn't make it home. This is Rambo's tribute or memory to them every time he holds this knife. So these are the, there was 10 guys in that unit, 11 if you count Colonel Troutman. So he led the unit and then you had 10 guys. Now if you remember in First Blood, let me get this little piece of paper, I wrote it down here. If you remember in First Blood, Rambo's in the mine and he's got the fireplace in front of him and he's eating uh, the pig. Uh, Troutman's in the tent with uh, the uh, Sheriff Teasel and he's trying to get Rambo's attention on the radio. And he goes, Covey, Le Covey leader calling Raven, come in Raven. And Rambo props up. And then he goes, Covey leader ident to identify Baker team. And then he rattles out a certain amount of names. Rambo, Mesner, Ortega, Corletta, Jorgensen, Jorgensen Danforth, Barry, Krakauer. Well, those guys are these guys here. This is the memory of these guys that died in Vietnam, the Special Forces Unit. Now, if you take Rambo away, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven names, yet you have nine notches. If you go to the start of First Blood, you have Rambo walking down to the Del Mar Barry house, and he has a word to the Del Mar Barry widow and he asks if if he's home and he pulls out a picture and he once again he rattles off a whole bunch of names and the names that he rattles off are Danforth, Westmore, Bronson, Ortega and Del Mar. So Rambo actually mentions two other guys in that unit. So if we go through all of them if I can remember I'll point down to it. We've got Bronson, Coletta, Danforth, Jorgensen, and then if we go to the back, 
Krakow, Mesner, Ortega, and Westmore. So we've got the eight guys that died in Vietnam. These are the guys that were in Rambo's Special Forces unit that never made it home. Now, this big notch right at the front here, apparently is reserved for Delmar Barry. That was Rambo's best friend who actually made it home from Vietnam. But because they spread that um, Agent Orange all around Vietnam, he actually made it home but died of cancer. So this big notch at the front is to symbolize Rambo's best mate. That's Delmar Barry. So these are the eight guys in his Special Forces unit that didn't make it home. That's a tribute to them. And that's his best mate that did make it home but actually died of cancer. So that's just awesome. I, you know, to think that so much thought went into making that knife is just brilliant. And you think about in the last Rambo 4 movie, there's nowhere really for Rambo to go, the series. You know, he, he headed back home. He was walking down the big farm track there back to his father's place. But there is mileage, if someone wants to take it on, to make prequels. Now, you've got 10 characters, plus Colonel Troutman, plus uh, Will Teasel. He served in the Korean War. If someone is willing out there, and I love Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan's an unbelievable movie maker. This would be a perfect trilogy for someone like Christopher Nolan to get in touch with David Morrell, the uh, writer of the first Blood book, and speak to old vets. Of, of how it was in Vietnam, and there, you know, you could make three movies without a drama. So you could uh, start it from, you know, showing how the boys grew up, what kind of their families were, how they got into uh, the uh, armed forces, how they made it into the special forces. It doesn't have to circulate all around Vietnam. You could have uh, some war action. You could have how people back at home were hating on the, the vets, you know, calling them all sorts of names, how the families would have uh, coped with all that. It would make fascinating uh, viewing, I reckon. And one scene that I would love to see, in the last bit of First Blood, where uh, Rambo's going through his PTSD, and, and in saying that, that's one of the first movies to ever deal with PTSD. Not that they ever referred to it in that film, but... You could see it right there and then. That would have resonated with a lot of Vietnam vets. And when he's when he's talking, when he's sort of like talking about what went on in Vietnam, and he talks about how they were in a bar with, uh, what's his name, Danforth. And he, Danforth's first name's Joseph. And if you listen to the movie, he refers to him as Joey. And he says he's in a bar with Joseph Danforth or Joey, and they're talking about how they want to go back home and sort of like ride in their cars until the wheels fall off and stuff like that. And he says this kid comes up saying, shine, please shine. And next minute, the box is wired. Danforth opens the box. He's, he gets blown everywhere. His legs are all over the joint. His guts are all over Rambo. That itself would be such an iconic scene if you would incorporate that in one of the movies you can only imagine if you were to make that really gory and true to how would how it would actually happen, that would be truly iconic. And it would really resonate with what the vets went through over in Vietnam. So I reckon there's mileage. If someone wants to really delve into making three prequels to the Rambo films to, to find out how all these characters came together, these 10 Special Forces Baker team members... It'd just be brilliant. I reckon it'd be superb. So that's my thoughts on that. Uh, a few other things here I want to show you. I picked up off eBay. This is the first and only time I've ever seen these. These are movie cups from the 1980s of Rambo 3. So these cups are really popular these days. Every film that comes out these days seems to have a cup. But back then, I didn't realise... Uh, they actually had movie cups. I can't remember these as a kid, so I d I've never seen one of First Blood. So I think from the First Blood days, it might be a little bit too early, 1982. But 1985 with Rambo, the First Blood Part Two film coming in, maybe that's when this whole genre of movie cups and everything started. Also, another little tip: 
the whetstone and the diamond sharpener whatever you do these knives come razor sharp out of the box do not use the whetstone or the diamond sharpener to sharpen your knives until they're completely blunt you can slice through paper like a razor but if you use these on the knife you won't blunt your knife but what you will do it will not cut through paper it won't slice through paper like a razor it's still sharp but you take that edge off so be very very careful my advice would be do not use these at all okay so i i never sharpen this one this one came a bit later but i, I decided to sharpen this one and i deci decided to sharpen this one i could not for the life of me cut through paper afterwards like i could cut through it but it would drag along the paper not like it was when they first come out of the box so what i did he's got on youtube I decided to have a look at some whetstone videos to see if I could sharpen them myself. So I went out and I bought this gorgeous whetstone, which is a thousand grit on top, three three thousand grit down the bottom. And as much as I tried, and you've also got to be very careful because the angle you have to hold the knife, you may damage the side of your knife. So you just you got to be really careful. I was really careful with with uh, doing that, but for the life of me, I could not get them as sharp as they were out of the box. So I, I couldn't work out what, what what was going on. And then I just had a look at this Rambo First Blood knife, and if you have a look underneath the edge, I don't think it'll show up on the camera so much, but the edge is shaped like a V. And you just can't get that. Well, I, I couldn't get that anyway. I couldn't get that off a whetstone. So what I did, I did some more investigating. And if you want to get them back, if you have sharpened them, if you have these knives, even if you've sharpened them and you can't cut through paper, go out and get yourself one of these. The Any Sharp Sharpener. It's got a little suction cup. You just place it on any bench. Bang. This pushes back. And you can sharpen your knife now a lot of people uh, hate on these type of things because it takes off a little a lot of metal which is true you can actually see the metal filings every time you do sharpener sharpen them but you're not going to sharpen these every day you're going to sharpen it once and that's pretty much about it and when you think about it if you look at how thick the blades are you're never going to go through that so you know if you want to get them back to razor sharp i suggest you use the little any sharp sharpener now if i can place the the uh phone down somehow and maybe show you guys how sharp this original rambo knife is it's absolutely brilliant let's see if i can get it right, i'll put it down here All right, let's hope that works yeah, that's the Rambo knife that I haven't sharpened, the first blood knife. And if you look at that. It's very, and this is straight out of the box. It's, it's very impressive. So when I sharpen those other two, I could not get them to cut like this until I used that any sharpener and I got them back to this sharpness with that little V-blade. So it's just incredible how sharp it is. So this is razor sharp. And I'll, and I'll show you something here in this cupboard here. Back in 1982, we were all Rambo fans. And after seeing the movie, we went out and we bought knives. And this is this is from 1982. I found this in a cupboard. And this is the knife that was similar to the first blood knife back when I seen it as a 10-year-old. And as you can see, the difference in both the knives. But this was completely blunt. I got this to a point where it was sharp off the whetstone. And then I ran it through the any sharpener. And if you have a look at this, 
this is just a sharp now as well and this this hasn't been sharp since the 80s so this is just as sharp as the first blood knife so always need a sharp knife I would suggest get that any sharpener it fits in your pocket and it's the easiest way you're not going to spend there hours or you know half an hour to an hour trying to sharpen um, a blade off the whetstone so my suggestion would be get the any sharpener it's a lot easier it's only small fits in your pocket and it works out perfectly all right well this video has run for 40 odd minutes <laughs> I knew it would. There's a lot, there was a lot of knives to get through. I'll just show you also how I display these knives before I go. And I'll tell you why I'm so passionate about Rambo knives. Sometimes you reflect back on your life and you think, you know, why are you this? Why are, are you the person that you are? As a 10 year old, I can remember going to see First Blood and I was just besotted by that movie. We, were, we all wanted to be John Rambo after it. And so we all went down, we all bought knives, we all hit the bush, we all pretended to make traps and, and whatever else. And if you actually look on this YouTube channel, uh, where this uh, actual video is uploaded, you will see over a 100 videos of some of the stuff that me and a whole bunch of friends get up to. Abandoned power stations, waterfalls, bushwalking, um, caves, mines, abandoned train tunnels. Uh, we seek out these things from other YouTube YouTubers and then we go do our own exploring. So if you're interested to see what us guys get up to and we've visit, visited a lot of places, you know, mental homes, abandoned mental homes, psychiatric wards. Have a look on this channel. There's a hundred plus odd videos. Start from zero. I think they're all numbered. And work your way up you know some of my favorites are the uh power station uh that we went through the power station is just like a little mini city it's incredible how big it is um the psychiatric ward that we visited earlier this year that they say is haunted you know we walked all the way through that as well that was brilliant as well so if you're interested to see why i'm so passionate and what we get up to i suggest you can go have a look at uh, at those videos. I think you'll find a little bit of entertainment in it. So, but so what I've done with these, just before I go, I've been rambling on for quite some time now. Okay, so I've cut myself four little pieces of dowel. These dowels will go just inside the sheath up the top here. A sheath handle that, that actually goes around your belt the belt loop so i've cut two black ones for the two black sheaths and two uh, normal wood grain for the wood grain type sheaths so we'll just get these take them out into the lounge room and i'll show you how i display them Put some lights on. Okay, so it's pretty dark in here. Let me see if I can get a, a torch. As I've got a few torches here. Okay, we managed to find a torch. So this is what I've done here. If you have a look at this, this is just like a hat rack or a clothes rack two piece. So You've got your first piece here and the other piece here. And I've just bent the two bottom bits here and these ones here and these ones here and these ones here. Up the top there, I've just cut or printed out some Rambo sized, uh, so sorry, some Rambo um, posters, little posters of the actual movies. And I've cut them down to trading card size, put them in little plastic sleeves and just put them up at the top there just to signify signify which knife is from which movie so what we do 
is we come down here, we get this. So we put this here. So this is how I display my knives. So it just hangs there like that with the first blood little uh, trading card above it. And if we get the next one, sits in like that, in there like that. That's the Rambo 2. We get the Hibben 3. Sits in there like that. And then you got the Hibben 4 machete. That sits there like that. So that's how I display my knives. I just sit on the door. Whenever I go camping, I decide which one I want to take along. And you've got the little trading cards up the top there. And anytime someone comes around, they say, oh, what the hell are those? So that's the four knives. Don't you just hate that when the video runs out? So thanks for watching, guys. I just want to also mention... In the description box down below, I'm going to put links to my favorite Rambo videos of all time that I've uh, come across on YouTube, so please check them out. And once again, on this channel, uh, if you're interested, we explore a lot of uh, waterfalls, caves, mines, power stations, abandoned hospitals. So if you've got the love of all things abandoned, uh, please check out all my videos. I think you'll be pretty interested to see some of the places that we get into, some of the places that we climb. So once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you again real soon. Bye.